I want to greet everybody again with another beautiful week uh, this uh, Monday afternoon and I would like again to uh, personally thank you for being with me at this time because uh, in this way I can uh, always uh, be able to encourage you with the Word of God. The Word of God is what we need right now, especially this uh, 2021. We don't know yet what uh, will happen, but uh, the Word of God is our stability. And we ought to be praying to God and continue trusting in our Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to speak to you about uh, something that I believe will again build up your faith. I mentioned that I might uh, go back talking about Israel and prophecy, but I still feel that I need to uh, speak something that is encouraging to everyone. And uh, what I would like to talk to you about is something that I believe is very much practical, but uh, established on the Word of God. You know, a lot of people are doing things. A lot of people are uh, doing projects. They are trying to accomplish something. And they are very good at starting something, even uh, starting a church. But the problem is people are only starters. They are not finishers. They are not able to complete or they are not able to finish what they have begun. So right now, I'd like to talk to you about being a finisher, not just a starter. And I want us to go to uh, the book of Luke chapter 14, because the principle of this message is found in the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 14, 28 to 30. Jesus said, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it. For if he, he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Uh, a lot of uh, good things is uh, said by Jesus here. Something that is practical to our lives and I like to talk to you about three things this afternoon and first that our aim in life must always be to be a finisher and an accomplisher as a people who believe in God we should never be known as one who is unable to finish all Christians I believe we are given a task by God and we need to comply we need to finish the race so even in the things that we do here in life, we should never be known to be a people, a group of individuals who are able or not able to finish. We got to always set our eyes on the finish line. Like a runner, obviously a runner uh, is always uh, looking ahead, looking at the price, looking at the going through the finish line because everything uh, in life or in everything in this world there is an end there is an end to a project there is an end to a person's studies there is an end to a person's daily work and there is an end to life so there is a beginning and there is an end and this is an end where, uh, where things will be evaluated, whether we have finished and completed the task or the work or not. You know, a good example of this is always the Apostle Paul. He is uh, a person that we can always find inspirations with regards to working for God. Because he always has set his eyes toward the goal of finishing the task that has been assigned to him from above. He always uh, talks about if I can only finish the task or finish the race. And obviously, he finished the race. That's what he said to uh, Timothy. He was able to complete the task assigned to him. And now to finish a task or not finish a task is 
tantamount to being a failure. If you are a person who is only a starter and you are not able to finish, well, that is tantamount to say that you are what? A failure in life. What, what else can be said of those people who do not finish? Are they a success? Success story ba sila? Obviously, they will, be, uh, they will not be rated as successful, but they will be rated, sorry to say, as a failure. You know, people will be measured at how they accomplish a job or accomplish a work or a goal. And that is true in our work, in our companies, in the jobs that we perform or in the business that we are involved in. Okay, we will be measured at how we accomplish something, at how we finish a uh, project or a goal. And that is, they, uh, people will either be uh, evaluated, they will be measured and rated at the end as either successful or a failure. And sa atin, there is no choice for us to become a failure. We need to always uh, look into becoming successful. And thus, there must be an inner drive for us to always be a finisher. There's got to be this inner drive for us to always finish a task or finish an assignment. We should not uh, only be starters, but we should be performers. We need to perform, and a performer is somebody who finishes the job. And he does not just simply finish the job, he does it very well. Now, I mentioned the Apostle Paul to you, so let's look at Paul, because uh, Paul made sure he was a finisher and not just a starter. Philippians chapter 3, 13 to 15. <clears throat> Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to what win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And look at verse 15. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. This is a, a great advice of Paul that all of us who are mature in Christ should always take a view of things. What is that view that we forget everything behind and we are always straining to what is ahead. And what is the purpose for straining ahead? To finish the job. He pressed on toward the goal for what reason? To win the prize. So he's thinking about going through the finish line and completing the race, completing the run. So everything that we have must be channeled towards accomplishing whatever assignments and tasks given to us, especially the calling that we have received from God. If you have received a calling from the Lord, don't just start it. Parang masaya sa simula. When you're being called and finally you said yes, and you go, you, you go out and went pioneering, at first it's kind of looking well, but the prolonged period that caused you to really kind of mellow down <coughs> and cool down with regards to the plan or the goal. And then in the end, you did not finish it. <coughs> that is not what God wants us to be doing in life. Whenever we are, uh, we are starting something, finish it. When God gives you an idea to start a business, why not do it? and grow it and finish it, so to speak. Why not complete it? Don't ever be a person who is uh, lazy and uh, you have to push this individual in order for him to do the job or do the work. That person that is being pushed is not a performer, okay? Don't look for somebody uh, if, uh, for work or a job or you uh, will have to hire and then all the, th the time that you do is push them, push them, push them. They are not performers. They are a burden on your shoulder. Now, 
The Greek word for finish here is ekteleo. Ekteleo, the word ek means out, okay? Uh, and it means to fully complete, not partially. You are uh, completing something fully, daily, partial, uh, not just something, okay, I have done 70% of the work. Just like the King Saul, when God told him to kill all the Amalekites, wala kang titira. You are not to spare no one. But he spared the best uh, things. And when uh, Samuel com uh, confronted him, he said, I have done what the Lord uh, the, told me to do. And Samuel said, really? What is that bleeping of uh, sheep and goats that I hear? And who are these kings? He had not performed very well the responsibility. You need to fully comply. Another meaning is to bring to an end. And it's not just bringing something to an end. You're bringing something to a good end, not a bad end. <laughs> A um, bad end is uh, for the failures, but you are bringing everything to a good end. Also means uh, to perform a command. Whatever command has been given to you, you are there to uh, comply. Or uh, you are performing an order or a task. Another meaning is to do just as commanded. And lastly is to finish a process. You are finishing a process. Whatever is expected to you, this is the entire procedure. Tinatapos mo talaga. You are accomplishing it. You don't leave a work uh, in a day that had been assigned to you. And, you know, uh, you said, I'll do it tomorrow. If you can do it today, why not do it today? If you can finish it, then finish it. Or before you take your day off in the week, make sure that you have done everything, walang backlogs, so that you can uh, fully rest. That's the principle of the Sabbath. You have performed well that week and then you can rest and you start a new week afresh. That's the, 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 the thing that uh, God wants us to uh, know or wants us to accomplish. Now, all these meanings give us a picture of what? Productivity. Truly, there is an evidence of success here. You are a person who is always productive. Amen? Can I ask you to type and say, I am a productive person? Come on. I am a productive person. Wag po tayo maging tamad kahit na po sa gems. Say, I am a productive person. Now, to be able to finish must always consume us within. It must be something that dominates our whole being. It must consume us. You know, with the Lord Jesus Christ, His passion was always consuming Him. John 4, 34. This is at the time He was ministering to a Samaritan woman and the disciples were uh, saying, Eat, Lord, eat. It's already uh, past uh, 12 noon. Eat, Lord. And Jesus said, verse 34, My food, said Jesus, is to what? To do the will of him who sent me. So that's first thing. To start to, uh, uh, to do, to uh, make it a point that uh, he will perform the work that has been sent to him. But that is not all. The next part is, and to finish his work. And to finish his work. So to do the will of God, we can say that's the starting point, the beginning. And to finish it, <coughs> tapusin lahat. This is the Lord. And we know that Jesus uh, finished everything because when he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. It's all done. Even Paul followed this pattern of the Lord. Acts 20, 24. However, I consider myself worth nothing to me. If only I may what? Finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. That I may finish 
the race and complete the task of the Lord Jesus has given me. Not just a starter, Paul was a finisher. Now let's move on to the second point. And let's talk about the results of failing to finish. Let's go back to the words of Jesus in Luke 14, 28 to 30. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Two things I like to point out here. That number one, failure is always noticeable. Failure is always noticeable. Consider the last phrase of verse 29. Everyone who sees it. Everyone who sees it. So notice that there will always be those who will see our inability to finish. There will be people who will see the obvious. No matter how you talk and push yourself or tell everybody that you have done something or finished something, people will see the result of your inability to finish. Whatever we do will not pass by unnoticed by these people. Failure is always evident. Listen to me. Failure is always evident and it is always obvious. It will be seen by the people around us. Failure cannot be hidden, therefore. Hindi mo pwedeng itago yung failure mo. Yung pagka palpakis ng isang tao, hindi niya pwedeng itago. Now let's look at the, the Greek meaning of the word see. It means to be a spectator, to look at, to be a beholder, to view attentively, to survey, to view mentally, and to discern. Thus, the failure will indeed be highly noticed by everybody. It will be obvious to their eyes. No matter how you explain it, no matter how you tell everybody, I did my job. No, it will be obvious to everyone you are not able to comply. You're not able to finish. And secondly, ridicule. Ridicule will always follow a failure. Not only will there be eyes upon us, but there will also be mouths. Take note of what people say who witness somebody's failure here in our uh, text. It's Luke 14, 29 to 30. For if he lays the foundation, that is, he started the work and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Now notice, this guy has already laid down the foundation. He already spent enormous amount of money to uh, lay down the foundation. He had already started it, okay? He had already began the work, but he's not able to finish. And how will people react? People will, secondly, ridicule him. And the word ridicule in the Greek means to jeer, to deride, or to mock. People will mock him. But you know, looking at the inter, uh, literal meaning rather of uh, this word, this means to make a sport as to a child. To make a sport as to a child. Have you ever seen ch children mocking each other? Okay. Uh, they will deride one another. Remember uh, the high-pitched laughter of uh, the mockery of children. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, palpakis, ah, you're not able to do, ah, it, it, it's, it, it's something like that, okay? You are not able to finish and you will be ridiculed like a little child by another child. That's the picture of it. And you won't like it. So just imagine the words that they will say to you if ever you start and not able to finish. And they, they will do this to embarrass you. 
and to humiliate you. The reputation will not uh, be that good if we are not able to finish or perform the job. Di ba mas maganda that people will uh, commend you and praise you after you have done a wonderful thing and people uh, see the evidence of the good work that you have finished? Everybody will give you an applause. In the office, everybody will clap their hands because you have done what is good. Before um, your bosses or your supervisors, oh, you will be honored before them, okay? Because they too have recognized your performance, especially, okay? And because of that, you will find yourself being promoted in the time of evaluation. Uh, you will see uh, salary increases and things like this. So, let me move on to uh, my last point. The third thing I'd like to talk to you about is we should never make failure as our option in life. Can you type it? Say, failing is not my option. Failing is not my option. Okay, just uh, last week I talked about uh, giving up is not an option for us but also failing, okay? Failing is not an option or failure is not an option for you and me. It is not a matter of something that we will choose to be, okay? You, you, you got to always look at yourself as an accomplisher. You got to always look at yourself as a performer. It may be hard at the beginning, but just perform. And don't, by the way, don't put it in your mind. Oh, and push yourself like, and say, I am a performer. And you brag yourself. And then at the end, you have not even accomplished anything. Just do the job. Be humble. Do the job. Perform the job. So failing is not an option. And, you know, first thing under this is that God has not meant us to be failures in this world. He has not meant you and me to become failures. In anything that we do for Him, we are not to be failures. Remember that uh, He wants us to be the head, not the tail. He wants us to be above and never beneath or at the bottom. So we are to be overcomers. We are to be more than conquerors. We are to be accomplishers productive in everything that we do. We are producers. There are good things that are coming out in everything that we do because we seek to always finish the job wonderfully. We always uh, are there to let everybody know that uh, I am going to finish this old task and finish it goodly. Finish it very well. Amen. And di lang tayo upo sa buhay at maghihintay whatever might happen. Don't be a quitter. Don't be a, a, a person who gives up. Don't ever be a person who decides to not finish everything. Finish it. Now I know there will be a lot of uh, oppositions. There will be a lot, of, a lot of challenges. And you may not be able to make it as if you have already failed the first time you have done something. But the point is, you need to rise up. Get the job done again so you can finish it. Don't let your face be facing the ground as you're there collapsed on the floor. Don't be like this. This is not the plan of God for every one of us. The plan of God is finish the race. The plan of God is for us to what? Get into the promised land. As uh, pictured by the Israelites, God took them out of the house of bondage, Egypt, into the promised land. And that's the point 
of how we are to live our lives. We will not stop until we see the job done well. But even the Israelites, by the way, who went and conquered the land, they did not really finish the whole will of God because God said, destroy all the inhabitants. But they kept many alive. They were not able to expel them or dispel them from the land. And God said, if you're not able to do this, then they will be what? A pain in your neck. They will bother you. They will uh, take your children to worship their idols. And God says, annihilate or dispel them all from the land. Israel failed to comply. You see, whenever you fail to comply, you may probably have done it 95%, but there are still 5%. To God, when He asks you to accomplish something, it's always 100%. Do it, okay? Wag kalahati, not 50%, not 60, not 70, not even 90, not even 95, not even 99%, but 100%. So we need to finish the assignment, okay? The last thing I'd like to talk to you about, we need to finish the assignment. And how do we finish the assignment? Paano natin tatapusin yung assignment natin? Well, I'd like, to, to, uh, I'd like to give you three things here. Firstly, this begins by sitting down. And we find it in verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower, will he not first sit down? What do you mean by sit down? This is not sitting down in idleness, but this indicates that at the beginning, we start evaluating things. And we should have a moment of planning. Okay, this is very needful. Whenever we are to do a task, we need to sit down. Okay, sit down, work on a plan, Evaluate everything, analyze everything. So you got to have a pen, you got to have a paper, and there you work on uh, the whole thing. And secondly, to count or estimate the cost. This is very important. Again, so verse 28, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost? So he will try to sit down Estimate the cost. He will have to put um, kumbaga, monetary, uh, monetary amount to everything that he is planning to do. He would have to count the cost. How much will I spend to accomplish this? And it's not something that you have to do quickly or sa Tagalog ura urada. We are not to do that. We are to sit down. It's not something that you have in your mind and gawin ko na ito kaagad. Well, if you don't sit down, you will only be a starter. You need to lay down a plan and then you got to count or estimate the cost of this whole thing. And thirdly, consider the resources. Again, verse 28, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it or he has enough resources to complete it okay he has to estimate the money that he has money pictures the resources that we have however it's not just money that you are to uh, consider it not just the finances but also the manpower the personnel and all the other miscellaneous needed and uh, how do you pay them off uh, sa work nila, those are things that you are, you are to uh, be doing. Any planner in this world, any body who is in the corporate world and uh, they plan, they, oh, they will follow the things Jesus said. Sit down, count the cost, and consider the resources. If not, how can you build a great tower when you don't have or when you have not looked at everything 
you have already laid down the foundation and sayang, it's already there. All you got to do is build up. And you know, it's very expensive to build a foundation, especially right now. Mahal ang um, pag-build ng foundation when you are to dig down. And people will not see the foundation, but this is very important. But you have already uh, laid down the greatest part. And then you quit. It's always that we are to aim for the finish line. Or we are to aim to for the finish. We need to uh, look at everything and see to it that we will accomplish all this. Now, all these three things that I mentioned to you, they are all done at the beginning or at the start. Jesus said, will he not first sit down? So this is uh, the first thing, or these are the first things that you are to do. You do this at the beginning, at the start. However, it should continue on until the whole thing is finished. It's not just a one-time looking into and projecting everything or uh, planning everything, but you have a constant evaluation of what you are doing. And in this way, you will be a finisher. Whatever the Lord has put into you, you are able to finish. You are able to perform and you are a great producer in the kingdom of God. And I hope that you have learned something this afternoon. These are practical things that are based on the scriptures. Because Jesus would always want us to become people who are victorious and successful in everything that we do. This is how we shine our lights, the good works that we do for God to bring Him glory and honor. You know, will God be glorified if we don't finish what we have started or what He laid down in our hearts? Will He be glorified? Or will God will always be glorified whenever we finish a task? So everything is in our hands. And again, I hope that you have received the Word of God for this afternoon. And you can share this to other people who probably need to hear this teaching. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Abba Father, we just want to thank you for teaching us these practical things. Help us, Lord God, to always be a finisher, not just to be a starter. Help us, Lord God, to uh, perform in your kingdom. And all this shall be done because we know how to sit down. We know how to estimate the cost and look into our resources. May your people, Father God, find blessings in this word and whatever they are doing, whatever ideas that, they, that you have given to them, may they be able to uh, work out everything very well for your glory. We want to thank you. We want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> God is an uh, awesome, uh, mighty God. Praise the Lord. And uh, I like to always remind you again at this point to be faithful with your tithes and your offerings. Let the Lord be the one to bless you. Let the Lord be the one to uh, increase you in every way. There is no lockdown or there is no quarantine in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And again, I like to uh, flash uh, our information of how you can give online or by Gcash. Okay. Thank you. And uh, please remember that your pastors will always be calling you. If uh, it's been a while that your pastor have not uh, called on you or called you, well, these are their, uh, again, their uh, numbers. I'm flashing it again. And you can call them. Okay, you should be, uh, you should receive a call regularly. In fact, every month you should receive a call from your area pastors. Amen. Praise God. And uh, at this point, we'd like to uh, close in prayer and let me pray 
personally for those of you who will be uh, who are faithful in giving your tithes and offerings and then we will close in prayer Abba Father we just want to thank you for everything and uh, this opportunity that we can present our tithes and, and our offerings to you may your people be blessed may your people be honored O Lord God as they are faithful in returning uh, what is due you and I pray that uh, nothing will hinder them in receiving your goodness and your abundance. Thank you, Abba Father God, and may you go with your people this week. May you watch over them and protect them from harm. Protect us all from COVID-19. Protect us from earthquake, which you uh, protected us again last week and keep watch over us and keep our home safe, even safe from fire. So Lord, thank you and I commit your people unto you and may Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, his shalom, both now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you very much. The Lord's blessing be upon us all. Happy week to everybody. Shalom.